In this video, we'll talk a little bit about how to create parameters and we'll go over two different types. And then we'll talk about how to adjust those parameters and how to edit the user defined parameter after it's already been created. This is really useful. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by creating a double type interval, which is basically just kind of a double precision floating value. Let's change it to something like span fraction. Okay, type enter. We can set up a group name so that we can collect this into one of the pre-existing groups if we like, and we can set up the description. Now, I recommend giving a description that actually explains what it is and what it's intended to do. Because six months from now, if you go back and look and you have a parameter that says span fraction, you won't really have any idea what that is unless the description is there. Now, for starters, you can set a minimum and a maximum value and a standard value for this. So in this case, let's change that to zero. And we can set this to 10 for now because I'll demonstrate how to edit this later. And finally, we click create. Okay, so now here's our span fraction. And all of that information is down here. So let's create an integer type and we're gonna call this counter, okay? And let's give this a maximum value of a thousand and a value of one to start, okay? And again, we'll click create. So there's two new types. Notice that once you create a variable, you can adjust the name, the group, the description, the min and max, but you cannot change the type. So a double precision can't be changed to an integer and an integer can't be changed to a double precision. To adjust, you'll see that because we haven't linked these to anything, they're just here. They're just kind of hanging out, but here they are in the default group and I can grab span fraction and I can move it between zero and 10. And notice again, because we are at the maximum value, this bar went vertical instead of having this little sideways opening carrot. So watch what happens when we try to adjust counter. This is an integer value. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, etc. That will only ever be an integer value. So if you're using something that's intended to be a count or some whole number, then use integer types. Now, as I mentioned, you can come back and edit these user parameters. So let's say that our span fraction was set too small. We want a span fraction of 100, but unfortunately we set it to 10. What are we supposed to do about that? All we have to do, change this to 100, press enter. That value has now updated. So your maximum allowable value has been edited to 100. So that is a bit of an overview on how you can create two different types of user parameters, how you can adjust those values, and how you can go back and edit those parameters. Now, as a final note, I want to point out that user parameters don't necessarily have to be linked to anything to be useful. You can create user parameters that are only intended to carry around useful information. So if you have a user parameter that's an integer type that's intended to tell you what version of the aircraft you're working on, you can do that. You can set up some double value that's just a reference value. It's something that helps you remember. So if you had, say, a parasite drag coefficient that you're trying to aim for, but you don't remember where the sticky note is, you can record that information in user parms and save it. So it's a handy way of looking up values that you don't necessarily want just sticking around your desk. So try and be creative in the way that you're using user parameters, not just as ways of controlling your geometry, but also ways of keeping information saved within your model. 